Alright, so we are taking a look here at the Shen Drone's Thick X8 Heavy Lift Cinematic FPV Drone. And um, <laughs> this kit runs about $120 from Shen Drone. It's a really good deal. I'm really surprised that it's not more expensive, to be honest. The amount of carbon and hardware that comes with the kit is pretty insane. Um, these arms are 8 mil thick and the uh, motor mounting is pretty clever so it's got these um, little 3 mil cutouts that basically match the shape of the, the tip of the arm. That's where you're going to screw one motor on and then the other side of the arm is kind of cut out in the middle so that you can screw through and um, not have the heads of the screws touching the other motor. So we're going to go into the motor mounting first get one of the arms set up and make sure everything fits. For motors I'm going to be using the T-Motor F90 Pro 1500KV. You should have more than enough punch to uh, carry a 5 pound camera. I decided to go with the 1500KV instead of the 1300KV just for a little extra punch if I need it and um, I'll probably run a throttle cap if I find that I'm killing my batteries too fast or the motors are getting hot but it should be, should be fine on 1500KV. You want to, I think the sweet spots anywhere from like 1200 to 1500 for uh, for this bird. So the F90s come with a really nice kit. They come with uh, some braided nylon so you can make your builds look nice and neat and protect the motor wires. <laughs> comes with some heat shrink, some hardware, obviously your prop nut. Um, so let's go ahead and get one of these motors mounted up and we'll show you what the arm looks like. So we're going to take the shortest screws in the kit and we're going to use those to mount the motor to the individual uh, arm plate that's going to screw onto the main arm. So the shortest screws are going to be used for that. So just take four of those, put a little Loctite on the tip of the screw and uh, go ahead and screw in the first motor onto this little small plate. So now we can move on to the other motor and we're going to take the screws on the outermost um, side of the packaging. These are 8 mil screws and we're going to use those to um, secure the other motor to the um, main piece of the arm. So just take four of those screws, some Loctite, and we're going to secure this uh, bottom motor of the frame. Alright, so we have our two motors for one arm, and now what we're going to need are some longer screws and some nylock nuts to secure the um, individual plate to the main arm body. So we're going to take these uh, medium length screws, third one in from the outside on the packaging, right next to the uh, short motor screws, the 6 mil. And we're going to use these, we're going to take two per arm, two nuts per arm, and secure the individual motor to the arm piece.
Alright, so this next step is definitely optional if you guys want to uh, make your builds look a little cleaner and also kind of protect your motor wires from any prop strikes. Um, just kind of increase the longevity of the motor wires. Definitely recommend using some of this braided nylon. It's super light, so it's not going to increase the weight of the build too much. So you're going to take the heat shrink that comes with the motors. This heat shrink is actually pretty high quality. It's got some glue inside of it, so when you heat it up, it really locks that nylon braided mesh into place. Um, I actually did this in the reverse order, so I'd recommend putting your ESC on first and then measuring out the length of the wires you're going to need um, for the braided mesh. Um, so I ended up having mine too long, but I just didn't want to redo it. So I just kind of strapped the wires to the side of the arms. But if you want to get it nice and clean, definitely put the ESC on first, measure out the motor wires, and then um, cut the braided nylon based off of that length. All right, so now we're going to secure one of the arms to the frame between the middle plate and the bottom plate. So we're going to need the longest screws that come in the kit and some uh, nylock nuts and some metal washers for the M3 screws. This part was honestly one of the hardest parts of the build, getting the uh, the outermost screw to uh, lock down. If you have like a um, uh, a driver, like a socket head that can get in there and, and secure the nut that you can screw into, that'd be much easier. I unfortunately didn't have one of those, so I had to kind of crimp the um, the screw with like some pliers. So it's just a little bit difficult, but um, you know, I figured it out. But yeah, if you have like a a socket head that will fit on there, that'd be much more efficient than, than the way I did it. Alright, next up we're going to mount our PDB for this build. I'm using the APD X-Class PDB. It's a 500 amp PDB. Definitely overkill for the build, but um, you know, it's better to have a little extra juice than, than not. So um, I definitely don't need this PDB, but um, I just want a little extra security of a nice thick copper PDB for this build. So I'm going to take some uh, 12 mil screws through the bottom, through the middle plate, and um, then screw on a five millimeter aluminum nut, aluminum standoff, um, excuse me, or you can, you know, you can use whatever size fits really. <laughs> um, but yeah, for this stack, you want to keep the stack relatively low because the top, the uh, distance between the <laughs> middle plate and the top plate is actually not super high. So once we have the PDB on the uh, screws, it just take some male and female standoffs 
or however you want to mount your FC on top of the, um, the PDB. <laughs> so next we're going to do is measure out our power and ground for both the SCs. And before we solder them on, I'm going to put a little heat shrink on these. So I'm using some nice thick uh, one inch, P um, I believe it's PVC heat shrink. It's nice and durable heat shrink. <laughs> but it's also clear so you can see the nice uh, LEDs on the T-Motor F45 amp ESCs that I'm using. So once we got that shrunk up, we will go ahead and uh, secure the arms and start soldering on the power and ground for the ESCs. So now that we have our ESCs all soldered to our power distribution board, we're going to go ahead and solder our motor signal wires onto our ESCs. And uh, don't worry about the ordering here. We're going to have to probably change the um, motor uh, direction in uh, Beale Heli later on once we get everything all powered up. So just whatever looks the best and uh, makes it seamless, go ahead and do that. And then we'll go ahead and go into uh, Beale Heli later on and probably have to reverse motor direction anyway, so that's not a big deal. All right, next we're going to put in our standoffs. Comes with eight standoffs. Just use the um, six mil screws to get in here. All right, so we've got our PDB wired. We've got our ESCs on. We've got our motors on. We've got our standoffs on. And it's starting to look like a frame. So next up, we are going to um, get going on the DJI mounting. Now, the, I actually ended up not using this 3D printed mount. It was kind of a weird design, didn't like it. The screw heads kind of like rub the bottom of the, the DJI air unit, which is kind of weird. And also the mount blocks the uh, USB-C port and also the SD card port. So I'll probably design something um, and, and post it for you guys. 
Um, so yeah, just uh, what you could do is just use VHP or some double-sided tape and uh, secure the air unit that way. But actually, the um, antennas hold in place pretty well on its own, kind of just floating there. But I definitely put some foam underneath it. All right, so get your camera mounted up. You can actually use the screws that come with the uh, DJI kit. So we'll use the four screws that come with the camera, mount it up to the TPU, and you're good to go. So now we're going to um, place the pigtail on the uh, PDB. And for this frame, I'm using um, AS150 <laughs> connectors. These are what I use in my X class, and I you know, trust them with a, with a very powerful rig. Um, running 13 inch props, so um, definitely don't want to cut it short on this one and go with some like XT60s for sure. I would at least go XT90, but um, if you want to be extra safe, use these AS150s. You can get them on Amazon, so um, it's a pretty easy purchase. Um, I believe A Main Hobbies sells them as well. Um, they're a little pricey, you know, compared to XT90, but um, not super expensive. Definitely worth the extra couple bucks. Alright, so now we're going to mount the air unit antennas. Now the 3D prints that come with the frame are pretty clever design and when I installed it I actually made the mistake of putting the, the um, 3D printed antenna holders on the standoffs first with the standoff screwed down onto the plate. What I recommend doing is putting the antennas into the TPU, placing them on the air unit and then um, screwing down the standoffs from there because it was kind of tricky to uh, get the antennas into the air unit. So yeah, the steps would be mount the air unit to the frame using some double-sided tape, place the antenna into the TPU holder, place that over the standoff, and then um, screw the standoff in once you have the, um, the uh, MMCX connector plugged into the air unit with the antennas. Thank you. 
Alright, so now we're going to mount our Crossfire Diversity and our Maytag GPS system. So I actually um, just came up with this little design here and uh, I'll definitely post it on Thingiverse if anyone wants to use it. Nothing fancy, but it definitely holds the uh, GPS away from the carbon so it's nice and um, <laughs> you know away from interference. And then it also uh, is a good place to mount your DJI, sorry, your uh, TBS Crossfire antennas. So that's just going to send the back of the frame and screw down through the um, top plate into the standoffs. And um, <laughs> that's going to allow us to kind of thread the wires through that middle plate into one of those holes and down to the flight controller. All right, so let's talk about wiring now. On the flight controller, we're going to start off with the bottom of the Radix 2. We're using the Radix 2 for this build. There's the USB-C on the left if we're looking top down on the flight controller. So we have our uh, pin headers on the top of the flight controller. There's seven up there. We have our ground, our 5 volt they're going to be using on this section. And then we have our TX5 and RX5. So there's only four tabs that we need on the um, bottom side of the flight controller on the, uh, on the edge facing to the top of the sheet here. So we have our yellow wire going to TX5, our blue wire going to RX5, the black wire is going to go to ground, and the red is going to go to the 5 volt. And this is for the uh, Crossfire Diversity Receiver. Sorry, <laughs> the GPS. This is for the GPS. So the GPS, if you use the Maytech one that I use, should just have a little plug with wires coming off of it. So you're only going to need four wires coming off of it, the blue, the yellow, the red, and the black. And um, that's going to get you your GPS working. So just four wires again, make sure you run it off 5 volts. And then on the right side of the flight controller we have some more tabs that we're going to be using. So we have TX4 and RX4. Now this is going to go to the DJI, DJI Air Unit. So we have two wires that are going to go into the flight controller. We have white and gray wires coming off the DJI air unit uh, wire harness. So those are the two wires that are going to solder onto your flight controller as well as the ground, but we're going to show that on the other side. So you have your DJI air unit, your camera, so the white and gray cables. This is if you're not using the DJI remote controller. If you're using the DJI remote controller, you need the other two wires. If not, you can cut them off and just keep the uh, black, red, gray, and white wires. So here we go. So we have our power. Now we're going to power the DJI from an external battery. So we have an XT30. And on the left hand side we have our ground wire. On the right hand side we have our uh, power wire. That's going to be run off a 3S. I usually run a 520 mAh 3S pack. So this is really critical. So you have that ground wire. 
that's going to be split so you need to send half of it to the XT30 to the negative side and then the other half of it to the ground on the flight controller any ground on the flight controller and this will get your DJI OSD working I had an issue where it wasn't working and that's because I didn't have a common ground going from the um, X from the DJI to the flight controller so there's your uh, 3S pack plugged into the XT30 and that's how I'm going to power the DJI and this is how you're going to get the DJI OSD onto your goggles, the Betaflight OSD, through those white and gray wires as well as the ground going to the flight controller. Now we're taking a look at the top of the Radix 2. So we've got the USB-C on the right hand side. On the left hand side you're going to have a couple of uh, JST plugs for your cable harnesses for the ESCs. So we'll get into that in a second here. On the top you have eight tabs and then on the bottom you have eight as well. So we're only going to need a few of these, not all of them. So we have R2, T2, 5 volt, and ground. Now this is going to power and uh, control our TBS Crossfire Diversity Receiver. So I'm running the Diversity Receiver with the two antennas just for a little extra safety. And we're going to need four um, cables coming off of the Crossfire. So your ground, your 5 volt, your channel 1, and your channel 2. Channel 1 is going to go to R2, channel 2 is going to go to T2. So channel 1 is that inside one next to the 5 volt that goes to R2. Channel 2 is the outside pin that's going to go to TX, T2. Now you can use any uh, RX or TX you want. Um, this is just what I use and this this works. So if you're doing the same build, definitely recommend just using these this setup to ensure that your uh, Crossfire, your GPS, and all that good stuff works. On the bottom, on the top here, on the bottom section of the FC, we have our ground. Now remember, before we talked about the DJI needing a common ground to work with the um, Betaflight OST. If you're using an external power source to power the DJI, if you're not, don't worry about this step. If you're using the flight controller to power it, or you know, uh, a source off the off the FC or the uh, PDB that has a regulator on it, then you don't need to worry about this. So we have uh, half of the ground going to the XT30, and then it's split, and then the other half going into the uh, DJI Air unit. So again, if you're using uh, power off of the FC or the PDB with a regulator in between to power the air unit, you don't need to worry about this step. This is only if you're using an external battery, which I do recommend just for cleaner video and a little bit of extra safety. So that's the a split to create a common ground between the, uh, the stack and the air unit in order to get the OSD working. Now I use this ground tab on the top left corner of the FC to um, connect the ground wires off of all eight ESCs. All right, so we have motors one through four, ESCs one through four, and then basically what I did is I just created a solder bridge between all four of those wires, put a little heat shrink around it, and then um, connected that with uh, the ground wires for ESCs five through eight and then bridge those together and connect it to the flight controller. So this is really important, you want to make sure you have your ESCs grounded um, to the flight controller at the same spot that you um, connect the signal wires. Alright, so that's your ESC grounds there. And that's it for the flight controller setup. Alright, so now we're going to talk about motor orientation and um, wiring up your motors to the ESC harness that come with the Radix 2. There's going to be two harnesses that come with the Radix 2. One for motors 1 through 4, as well as VBAT, power and ground, and telemetry, and another one for motors 5 through 8, as well as the ground on there. So on the top of the top motors, these are going to be just what you're used to on a normal 5 inch drone. You got one on the bottom right, two on the top right, three on the bottom left, four on the top right. And then the bottom motors can be shown here. So 
So we have 5 on the bottom right, so 5 and 1 are a pair, 2 and 6 are a pair, 3 and 7 are a pair, and 4 and 8 are a pair. So we have 5 bottom right, 6 top right, 7 bottom left, 8 uh, top left. So these are the cable harness, these are the um, harness plugs that come on the Radix. So you have the larger one, that's motors 1 through 4. And the smaller one, that's going to be for motors 5 through 8, the bottom motors. Now this isn't super critical. If you do mess up the ordering, it's not a huge deal. We can go into uh, Betaflight and uh, do some resource mapping, which I ended up having to do, so it's not a huge deal, it's just kind of a pain in the butt but it is possible to fix it if you do wire them up wrong. And so what I did for this is I um, basically clipped, off the, clipped the wires off on the harness to about 20 millimeters and then um, basically solder bridge the signal wires coming off the ES, individual ESCs to the harness that plugs into the flight controller and just put a little heat shrink around that and that kind of made like a harness. So here we have our ESCs on the arms. Sorry, it's a little out of frame. Motor 1 is going to go to number 1 on the um, harness that comes to the flight controller. 2 to 2, 3 to 3, 4 to 4, pretty simple. And then we're going to do the same for the bottom motor ESCs, 5, 6, 7, 8, to the smaller harness. And again, these are the signal wires coming off of your ESCs. You should have a white wire and a black wire coming off of your individual ESCs. If you're using a foreign one, this doesn't apply. Um, it'll be a little different for you guys, but I wanted to do this build showing individual ESCs. Um, so, yeah. I, went, I decided to go for individual ESCs just for a little more um, cooling on ESCs as well as a little more stability and, and ease of fixing. If, if one ESC goes bad, I can just pop it off and put a new one on instead of taking the whole bird apart. So now we're going to talk about motor uh, di prop direction. So these are the top motors. So we have one, two, three, and four. So one is going to spin counterclockwise, that's inwards towards the frame. Two is going to spin clockwise away from the frame. This is for reverse props, by the way. Keep that in mind, reverse props. Three is going to go into the frame. That's counter, uh, sorry, that's clockwise. And um, four is going to go away from the frame, counterclockwise. And this is for running reverse props in Betaflight. Now when I say reverse props, all that means is that um, it's just the opposite of what this traditional prop direction used to be, which was the front motor is spun in towards each other, the back ones away from each other. Reverse props means the front ones spin away from each other and the back ones spin towards each other. So now we're going to take a look at the bottom set of four motors. My beautiful diagram here. <laughs> so we have uh, five, motor five, that's underneath motor one, and that's going to spin the opposite direction. So that one's going to spin clockwise. We have six, which is underneath number two. It's going to spin the opposite direction of two. So that'll be counterclockwise and towards the frame. So this is the traditional rotation. So the bottom motor spin the traditional way, the top motor spin the reverse way. Basically, you can look at it that way if you want, if that makes more sense. So motor seven is going to spin, spin in towards the frame clockwise. Counterclockwise, I don't know, I keep messing those up. And then um, number eight is going to spin towards the frame clockwise. So seven away from the frame. Eight towards the frame. There's a diagram in Betaflight that'll show you this. I just want to kind of sketch it out for you guys and talk about it a little bit. So each set of two motors should spin the opposite direction. So when you fire them up in Betaflight motor tab, each set of motors, so one and five should spin opposite of each other, two and six opposite of each other. And so All right, so now that we have our ESC signal wires going to the flight controller, we can start checking out uh, the motor direction and motor ordering. So what I did is I went to the CLI and I typed resource. I got my um, motor resources, which are the, um, the UARTs are assigned to. So you usually see like a letter and then like two numbers, and that's the uh, assignment for that uh, motor. So let's say motor one should be where motor four is. 
you would um, basically type resource. What I do, what I did is I typed uh, resource motor one none, resource motor two none, all the way down to motor eight none, and then just start start it off fresh. Just make sure you copy the CLI results from the resource uh, showing where all the motors are currently assigned to. So you have those saved. And then what you want to do is go in and um, basically unassign all the motors. And then what, when, what you do is you um, basically before you do this, you want to spin the motors up and take note of where motor one spinning. If it's spinning in where six is, then you need to go into the resource mapping and move motor one to motor six, whichever uh, number that's assigned to you. So it might be like A06 or like B13, for example. So you'd want to type in um, motor one and then type like A06 or whatever motor you need to assign that to. And then in my case, what I usually, what I do is actually just flip flop them. So like two one to five, five one to two kind of deal. Um, but you know, you might get it right when you just do, do your harness from the get go. So you might not even have to do this. I just got the ordering wrong, so it's not a big deal. So what I did there is I'm going into um, Betaflight and checking the direction of the motors now. Once I got the ordering right, I'm going to check the direction that they're spinning. If you have any that are spinning the wrong direction, we can connect to BL Heli. And what we're going to do is we can reverse motor direction in here instead of changing uh, this, the uh, one of the three wires from the, the motors going to the ESC. So this is the easy way to do it. So we'll just unselect all, we'll go to motor one and we'll reverse that one or whatever you need to do in your case. We'll write that and then we'll connect to the next one we need to do, which is motor three, we'll reverse that. So I just, what I did is I took notes on a little notepad to um, keep, keep it organized and make sure I didn't mess it up. So we reverse motor four and then the next one we have to do is motor six, reverse. And then we'll go down the list here. Motor seven also needed to be reversed. If you guys, if this is confusing for anyone, yeah, you know, do you feel like I didn't explain it clear enough? Feel free to hit me up um, on Discord. Um, hop in our server. I'm in here pretty much all day, hanging out. If you guys need any help on this, happy to help. So I'll put a link for that Discord server in the description down below. I'm just setting my beacon delay and beacon strength, just to let me know if I leave my quad on for like a couple minutes unattended. That'll just give me a little heads up. Hey. Got to turn me off. I'm gonna set my motor timing up to um, 28, de 29 degrees. I can't read that, but you guys should be able to read that. <laughs> I think it was set to 28 degrees. All right, so we're gonna write that and uh, disconnect, and then we'll go back into beta flight and double check our work here. So I'm gonna do is gonna spin up all the motors here and see if. They're spinning the correct direction. And remember that uh, both all the pairs need to spin in the opposite direction. So one and five should be opposite, two and six, three and seven, four and eight. So we're gonna go to the motor tab, spin them all up at the same time. Just go really slowly here. So the top top motor should be spinning um, Reverse direction, if you raise five inches or you use the flying five inches with reverse props, they should be that. Top, uh, front two motors spinning out, back two spinning in, and then the bottom four motors should be the opposite of that. All right, so that's your motor setup. All right, so getting into the crossfire settings, we're gonna go into the ports tab and set UART2 to serial RX, that's for our crossfire, UART4 to MSP on, that's for DJI, and UART5 sensor input the GPS Then in the configuration tab we're gonna go and set our ESC motor protocol to D shot 600 turn by shot uh, bi-directional D shot on for these ESCs they are um, BL Heli 32 set your motors to Octo X8 and motor direction reversed <laughs> scrolling down we're going to make sure we set our serial receiver protocol to crossfire if you're using the crossfire diversity. We're going to turn telemetry on, air mode, OSD, and dynamic filtering. Also make sure you have GPS turned on over here on the right hand side. Set it to U blocks and auto config.
power and battery, this is going to allow us to get our voltage on the OST, set that to onboard ADC. In the PID, t PID tuning tab, you guys can take a look at my PIDs. Did a little tweaking on the, uh, the P and the I for yaw and uh, cranked the D up quite a bit um, and turned feed forward up to 150. That feels pretty good for me. <laughs> you go into your rate profile settings, put whatever you like in there. And then for the filter tab, I, didn't, I haven't touched anything yet, but um, I'll definitely let, let you guys know as I fly this bird more and do a little more tuning, but it, it flew pretty good on, on the current tune that I'm showing you right now. In the modes tab, I just have an arm switch and a pre-arm switch set up. I won't need anything else like turtle mode. Eventually I'll need um, failsafe and GPS rescue. So um, once I get that figured out, I will make a video on that as well. Um, so I have pre-arm and arm, just for a little extra safety precaution. Have that pre-arm switch so you don't accidentally arm your quad. Um, and then for your OSD, just put whatever elements you like on here. Uh, DJI is limited into what they can show on Betaflight OSD. Um, so test it out, see what you guys like, and uh, see what you kind of find useful. So that's it for the Betaflight setup. Hopefully you guys found this build tutorial useful. If you guys are building an XA drone, or if you're building the Shen drone stick, um, hopefully you got a few tips out of this video. I'm going to be putting out a lot of content in the next few weeks um, with my new camera that I'm going to be mounting on this. So keep an eye out for that, and we'll be diving into some camera settings and... Um, some more in-depth tuning and filtering if necessary and um, just overall um, you know kind of how I feel about the frame and how it's performing and trying to get you guys some cool footage so thanks for stopping by drop a comment if you guys uh, found this video helpful and I'll uh, see you at the next one